Good evening and welcome to Biz Roundup. I'm Chamod Fernando and we at Art Television bring you a collection of business highlights. Let's have a look at the headlines. Sri Lanka promises to continue the IMF program. Indo-Sri Lanka trade dynamics has immense potential, subject minister asserts. IMF removes Sri Lanka from its surcharge list. Now the news in detail. Sri Lanka is standing firm in its efforts to progress with its debt restructuring despite legal opposition from Hamilton Reserve Bank. In a critical response filed by Clifford Chance, the Sri Lankan government refuted Hamilton Reserve Bank's claims that recent political changes could derail the restructuring process. HRB, a creditor pursuing claims in Sri Lanka's 2022 sovereign default, has argued that the election of Andhra Kumar Adisanayaka as president introduces uncertainty, potentially jeopardizing the country's economic recovery efforts. The bank has challenged Sri Lanka's request to delay litigation. However, Sri Lanka insists the government remains fully committed to its IMF-backed economic program despite leadership changes. They argue that a stay in proceedings is essential to focus on restructuring, which is crucial for economic stability. As the case awaits a decision in the U.S. District Court, the outcome could have significant implications for future sovereign debt disputes. Sri Lanka's finance and leasing companies are set to benefit from the country's ongoing economic recovery, aided by moderating inflation and lower interest rates, according to a recent Fitch Ratings report. The agency projects improved performance for the sector by the next financial year, driven by increased loan growth and favorable economic conditions. Key to this positive outlook is the gradual easing of vehicle import restrictions, which had been in place since 2020 to safeguard foreign reserves. With the relaxation of these restrictions, demand for vehicle financing has surged, boosting loan growth in the sector. Fitch estimates a year-on-year -year loan growth of 9.6% for the sector in the first quarter of 2025. Profitability in the sector is expected to rise as lower funding and credit costs boost returns on assets, which is forecast to increase to 5.5% in 2024, up from 3% in 2023. However, Fitch cautioned that the recovery remains fragile and contingent on the progress of Sri Lanka's broader economic reforms. Minister of Foreign Affairs Vijita Hera said that the trade dynamics between India and Sri Lanka has immense potential to growth within a special focus on key sectors. He also highlighted the potential to increase tourist arrivals from India to Sri Lanka through more air connectivity, speaking at the 78th Independence Day celebration of India held in Colombo recently. The trade dynamics between India and Sri Lanka have immense potential. India is one of Sri Lanka's largest trading partner, providing essential imports that supports various sectors, including agriculture, health, and infrastructure. In return, Sri Lanka offers India strategic access to its markets and resources, enhancing our own economic landscape. It is heightening to note that the close ties between the two countries, two nations, holds immense promise for the future. The total two-way trade has increased over the years. Beyond traditional trade, we are also witnessing a growing interest in investment and technology exchange. Indian companies are increasingly investing in such key sectors. As economies in the global south, Sri Lanka values the partnership with India in the economic front. I note that last year, Sri Lanka's highest tourism footfall was from India, amounting to appro approximately 3 lakhs. However, for a nation with the 1.4 billion population, there is tremendous scope to promote tourism with increasing air connectivity between our two countries. Speaking at the event, Indian High Commissioner to Sri Lanka, Santosh Jha, said that Sri Lanka and India are deeply intertwined and there is no other option but to cooperate with each other. Sri Lanka has excellent tradition of classical Indian dance performances. So that is the kind of 
uh, unity that we have. And that is the kind of uh, very, very fundamental sort of basis that we have in the relationship that, like it or not, whims and fancies of people cannot change it. We cannot be, you know, uh, thinking in terms of living apart. That's not even crosses your mind, cannot be even imagined, because that's very, very unreal, unnatural. And, and that is where I think when we say we are deeply intertwined, deeply interlinked, and uh, sort of uh, having no choice but to cooperate, this is where I come from. And it is a very honestly felt feeling. I also must draw your attention to the fact that uh, India, over the years, has been uh, a first responder in the region. Every time we have had a situation in our neighborhood where our friends have needed our support, we have extended it, and clearly have established ourselves as the most reliable and trusted partner in the region. And Sri Lanka is no exception. We all know what I'm referring to and how many times that has happened over the recent past. Uh, there, I, I would not like to enumerate that. So there are very clearly uh, very deep uh, bonds that we have, which are inseparable, uh, inextricable. Stay tuned. We will return after this commercial break. Welcome back. Sri Lanka is set to be removed from the International Monetary Fund surcharge list as part of the IMF's upcoming lending reforms, effective from next month. The reforms are aimed at reducing the cost of borrowing for heavily indebted countries. Sri Lanka joined the list of 22 countries facing IMF surcharges in 2023, with these surcharges adding 2 to 3 percent on top of regular interest rates for countries whose borrowing exceeded certain thresholds. These fees have been a controversial aspect of IMF lending as they increase the financial burden on countries already struggling with high debt levels. Sri Lanka was expected to pay $308 million in surcharges over the next decade, accounting for nearly 16% of total IMF-related charges and interests. Sri Lanka's removal from the surcharge list is a significant relief, as it had already paid over $1.4 million in surcharges this year, in addition to $73 million in other IMF charges. With the country's outstanding IMF credit standing at 331.3% as of July 2024, this reform will ease a substantial financial burden, allowing Sri Lanka to focus on its broader economic recovery efforts. Sri Lankan parliamentary delegation participated at the 149th Interparliamentary Union Assembly, which took place in Geneva, Switzerland. This event brought together over 630 parliamentarians from 130 countries showcasing the world's dedication to strengthening parliamentary cooperation and governance. Representing Sri Lanka, Secretary General of Parliament Kushani Rohanadira and Chief of Staff Deputy Secretary General Chaminda Kularatna took part in various key meetings. These included sessions with associations of Secretary General of Parliament, the Asia Pacific Group, and the Standing Committee on Sustainable Development, among others. Their involvement provided Sri Lanka with valuable insights into global parliamentary practices. This year's assembly featured diverse participation with 54 speakers of parliament, 36 deputy speakers, and a notable 36% of attending MPs being women. The Sri Lankan delegation also engaged in discussions with prominent figures, including IPO President Dr. Tulia Axon and key members of the Gender Partnership Programme and Sustainable Development Goals Initiative. They further met with Dr. Lina Buglova from the International Atomic Energy Agency, underscoring the importance of international collaborations in areas like nuclear security. The Sri Lanka-Indonesia Business Council of the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce successfully concluded a business promotion mission to Indonesia recently. This initiative aimed at strengthened trade, investment and business ties between the two nations while exploring collaborative opportunities across key industries. 
Key highlights of the mission included participation in the Indonesia South and Central Asia Business Forum 2024, organized by Indonesia's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. With a focus on unlocking potentials and fostering economic partnership, the forum emphasized regional cooperation in food security, health and technology. The SLIBC, in collaboration with the Sri Lankan Embassy in Jakarta, operated a booth at the forum, drawing significant interest from Indonesian business stakeholders. In addition, the mission included a visit to the 39th Trade Expo Indonesia, a premier platform showcasing Indonesia's industrial strength. Sri Lankan delegates explored potential collaborations and gained insights into Indonesia's evolving business landscape. The delegation also visited MM2100 Industrial Town in Chikarang for a hands-on view of industrial operations and engaged in meaningful discussions with the Indonesia Employees Association, all aimed at fostering stronger economic partnerships. Stay tuned, we will return after this commercial break. Welcome back. Sri Lanka's tea exports earnings have exceeded 1 billion US dollars during the first nine months, marking a 6% increase from the previous year. However, September saw a 15% year on year drop in the quantity of tea exported, amounting to a 26 year low of over 19 million kilograms. The decline is attributed to lower tea production in the second quarter, though production began showing signs of recovery in the third quarter. Total tea exports from January to September 2024 amounted to 182.3 million kilograms, slightly higher than the 181.4 million kilograms exported during the same period in 2023. Iraq remains the largest importer of Ceylon tea despite a slight decline in volumes. Other key markets like Russia and the UAE have seen growth, with UAE volumes increasing by 33%. Saudi Arabia, a high-value market, recorded a 34% year-on-year increase in imports. Mangala Vijay Singh officially assumed the duties as the 16th chairman of the Sri Lanka Export Development Board at the EDB headquarters recently. In his inaugural address to the staff, he emphasized the importance of diversifying Sri Lanka's export portfolio and focusing on high-tech industries such as electronics and pharmaceuticals. He highlighted the growing significance of service exports, which saw a 69% increase in revenue in 2023, totaling 3.1 billion US dollars. This growth was primarily driven by sectors like ICT, logistics, transport and construction. Vijay Singh affirmed the government's goal of achieving 5 billion US dollars in ICT export revenue by 2030, acknowledging the foundational work done by his predecessors at the EDB. Vijay Singh also emphasized the need to remove barriers that hinder export sector growth and to explore avenues for encouraging more exporters and products in Sri Lanka's export basket. He outlined three key priorities for the EDB under his leadership, increasing per capita export revenue, improving Sri Lanka's ease of doing business ranking, and achieving a target of 30 billion US dollars in export income by 2030. BYD Colombo Motor Show 2024 is set to take place on the 6th, 7th and 8th of December at the BMICH in Colombo. Organized by the Asia Exhibitions and Conventions Private Limited for the 18th successive year, the event promises to be a game-changer for Sri Lanka's motor industry. The BYD Colombo Motor Show 2024 is proudly sponsored by BYD and powered by John Keel CG Auto. It provides a premier platform for suppliers and innovators in the motor industry to showcase their latest products and services. This year's event features a wide range of exciting activities, including a motor car show, a spectacular 4 bound 4 off-road vehicle exhibition, a vintage car showcase, and demonstrations of car audio, video, and security systems. There will also be a show dedicated to car care products and an adrenaline-pumping display of bike stunts. With that, we wind up for today. For this and more, subscribe our channel on YouTube, follow us on Facebook. See you tomorrow with the State of Business at 7.45 p.m. 
Take care and good night.